Here we are. Hey everybody, part two of stuffed grape leaves. Hopefully, we'll get the rest of the gang in here. I've just been working on this this uh, stuffing. I'm sauteing my onions, diced tomatoes, and rice together. Hi, Jim. Hi, Aaron. Welcome back. Part two. It's Greek night. Welcome to Greek night. Hopefully we can get Suzanne on here. Dr. Suzanne, she's going to talk about the nutrition part of the Mediterranean diet. I tagged her. Meanwhile, we got some Greek music on in the background. Thanks. Hi, Rachel. Oh, yeah. It's... It's coming along. This is uh, part two. Giving people a chance to hop on. It's Greek night. Welcome to Greece. It's Greek night. Tomorrow is our Independence Day. 1821 to 2021 anniversary of it. Big. I've been seeing a lot of cool uh, posts from people about it. A lot of my Greek friends. And the uh, grape leaves I'm using are from my garden, fresh. I picked them actually last summer and I froze a lot of them in freezer bags so that I could have them, you know, for demonstrations and things. And they are doing really good. So I thought this would be a perfect time to pull them out. Just take them out the night before and they're ready to go. Very fun food to make, healthy and traditional, part of the Mediterranean diet. Hi everybody. So next what I want to do is add some uh, tomato paste to this. Where are my Greek hat to? <laughs> Let me know if you're back, Suzanne. I know she loves uh, the Mediterranean diet and Greek food. She was going to talk about it. Hi, Edie. She was going to help with the demo. Hi, Beck. Hey, Becky. Long time no see. Hello. Oh, yeah, as much as possible, I try to eat the Mediterranean diet. Well, anytime you eat things like feta cheese, you're eating the Mediterranean diet. I, I try to add feta cheese a lot to uh, my diet. Oh, Edie says she's never had them. Oh, they're so good. Right now I added the uh, tomato paste. The tomato paste is kind of like binds everything together. Miss you too. I got a fun evening plan for everybody that's on today. Can you hear the Greek music too? Welcome to Greece. Working hard, slaving. Wish you guys could be here. I'm slaving here in the kitchen for you. Oh. Well, I'm going to show you just how to fill these up. They, this is my Greek sailor hat. Glad you like it. Traditional. I got a few of them, but this is my favorite one. If you look at, a lot of you have me on Facebook, uh, if you look at my story, I'm even in my story on Facebook, I'm uh, wearing my Greek outfit. Oh, here she, she's here now. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, all right, now. Oh, you're sideways. I'm sideways? 
Wait, I got my not the same as you. All right, hold it. Let me take it off of this holder. Like this is better. Yeah. There okay. You are. That's All right. Better. Perfect. All right. Hi. I miss cooking with you. Oh my gosh, George, it's been too long. I'm glad you can make it. Yeah, me too. Well, so I'm just sitting in my kitchen watching you cook. It's really, it's really my favorite thing to do because <laughs> I don't have oh. any prep work. <laughs> Welcome to Greece. We can pretend yes, we're in exactly. Greece. Did you know I that the Mediterranean bottle of Uzo over? <laughs> Come in person. Did you know that the Mediterranean diet includes more than just Greek cooking? Oh, tell us all about it. So it, it includes Italian and French and some other European countries. They, a lot of them, use the Mediterranean diet, but Greek has really been the premier Mediterranean diet with their fish. Their tomatoes, their olive oil, like you said earlier, feta cheese, like all of those extremely healthy, like people grew in the ground and, um, you know, and eat from nature, just from garden to table. I, oh, yeah. I was just reading about that, too. And uh, they were saying the other great thing about the Mediterranean diet is that everyone gets together and eats, you know, like a family. Don't you miss that? Absolutely. I it know. What does your shirt say? This is, uh, it's backwards. Well, I'm, <laughs> I still can't figure out. I had trouble getting the writing, the camera to turn how I wanted it to again. But it's uh, Greece, in a, it says alas in Greek. Okay. The Greek All right. I love it. Alas. It's backwards. Okay. Hi, Heather. I still can't get it figured out. She loves greatly, so she's never tried them. We'll have a WebEx of just doing this technical stuff one day, okay? Because <laughs> I pushed need, request yeah. to join for like 10 minutes. Like I kept pushing it and nothing was happening. And I was so frustrated. I was like, no, I'm requesting to join. I want to join. Oh. And you so can't have that... a class without feta cheese, the Greek class. Perfect. <laughs> The feta cheese. And it has such a nice flavor, especially with the olives, the black olives, the lettuce, oh, yeah. everything you put in it. Oh, it's amazing. And it's really low fat. And it's 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 healthier than some of the other cheeses that we have, like the cheddar and all of that. Oh, yeah. I've been totally. reading all about it. So the origin of feta cheese is from... Oh, oh, Greece, of course, Greece. <laughs> Goats? Or, it's, it's like a goat milk, though, right? Yes. There yeah, are some that are from... Mm -hmm. It's goat milk. It's a, it's a mixture of goat milk with sheep milk. And this yeah. one's in... I'll have to show you the package. Don't get the... Whatever you do, don't buy the feta cheese that's, like, in your cooler section at your supermarket try to get the one that's in the brine with the one that's in the brine is there a brand that's better because there's that okay okay ios brand um i'm not saying it right i'm probably spelling it wrong what's what's the oh, best Eagle. brand yeah, I, yeah that I one yeah uh, as long as it's like um in a brine well i'm showing you i'll give you a close-up let me get this over here so you have uncooked rice, a, yeah, uncooked rice, stewed tomatoes, onions that you sauteed. What else did I miss? Oh, well, it's, it has uh, diced tomatoes, onions, olive oil, um, the tomato paste, and then the last thing that you add at the end is the herbs. Okay. Like dill so, and mint. Ooh, love those. So you know that Culinary Institute technique that the last thing that you add to your food, like the herbs, are the first thing that you taste. Yeah. Oh, like you were saying before. Yeah, I remember you were telling mm -hmm. me before about that. Mm -hmm. It's a technique that the chefs use. So that's a good one. A lot of people don't know. 
So what kind of rice is it? White rice? Is it quick cooking? Is it but basmati? I mean, what kind of rice? It, it's just the it's the basmati rice. I, I oh, don't use love. the because so the boss is yeah, really oh. sweet. Now in the summer, I usually have fresh mint and dill, a bit very readily available. But I have this product. It's a, they have a, a whole line of Greek seasonings called Epicure, and they have a whole thing of Greek seasonings. Well, so, so what's handy. your, is that like a tablespoon? Like, what was that? That was like two tablespoons. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be generous with the seasoning. You're just really going on all into the Greek thing. Exactly. I'm holding my phone because it was, my only holder is sideways. So I have to hold my phone. You see my, my kitchen. When are you coming to California, by the way? Well, hopefully soon. I've been wanting to. You can show us all around. To the, <laughs> take us to the beach. <laughs> Definitely. I'm just, Rachel is wondering what kind of rice I'm using. Just using basmati. So but does yeah, the, yeah, rice, the rice completes the cooking inside the grape leaf, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. So it finishes in the grape leaves. Right now, it's only partially cooked. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, this is the fun part. You take them, um, you take each grape leaf, And you're going to add a little bit. You actually let this cool down. So how did you prepare the grape leaves? What's that? How did you prepare the grape leaves? Oh, well, these actually are from my garden from last uh, summer. But what I did was I steamed them. OK. And then I put them in freezer bags right away, cooled them, rinsed them, and then put them in freezer bags. So that I can have them when I need. I just take them out the night before. So this is a really good, I mean, there's so much nutrition in this green. Like the darker green it is, the more you've got like vitamin K's, vitamin C's, all kinds of potassium, like a lot of vitamins in these leaves, right? But there's something even better about them for your weight loss. Like if you're interested in weight loss, yeah. One of the secrets is to eat um, foods with more water in them than other things. So grape leaves, you know, they have moisture in them. These tomatoes, they have water in them. These onions, you know, the olive oil is excellent for your, you know, blood pressure and all of that too. So when you're consuming foods with just a lot of water, there's no, you don't have any lamb in there, do you, or ground beef or anything? No, these are vegetarian. These are vegetarians. So you're going to consume all of this and your weight will, you'll see the benefit of your weight because it'll be, it'll be lesser than if you stuff these with meat or lamb. So if you eat um, two ounces of, of, of any meat and you think you're getting all of that protein, you're actually getting about protein for about one and a half pounds of the meat if you eat two pounds. There's other things that you're getting as well. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna be the same in your system. So I really love that you're doing vegetarian because it's so flavorful and it'll be filling with the rice. And yeah, you don't miss the meat. No, either. not at all. And there's this other, so if you're gonna do, if you want to trick your body into a keto diet, you could take some sort of keto supplement and then that when you have the rice, you won't feel guilty about having carbs. I don't feel guilty about having carbs anymore because I've been doing a keto thing with carbs. Oh, well, Rachel was asking if she can get grape leaves at a regular grocery store like Kroger or Meyer. 
And actually, sometimes they do have them in their international section, believe it or not, but, occasionally. Right, but they're in, they're, they're in a, a jar? Yes. They come yeah, in a see. jar like brine. You think they'd be all over California because all we do is have grapes all over the place from wine country. <laughs> but they're, oh, well, you know that, what? There's that's different, right? That's called, there's a brand that's called uh, California Grape Leaves. Really? Actually, that's the one I always recommend too. Are you saying that the grape leaves grown in these wine vineyards are different than the food that you're using? No, I mean, like, um, you can get uh, jars of grape leaves that are grown in California. Okay. From California. You think I'd be able to? I know. <laughs> I think I want to grow my own, honestly. Yeah, they, oh, yeah, you I, could. I love them. You should. So what is the what is the Mediterranean dish called, the stuffed grape leaves, and it only has the rice in it, the white rice? Are they just called stuffed grape leaves? When I go to a, um, a Mediterranean restaurant in Detroit, uh, you know, a Lebanese restaurant, for example, they're the most delicious grape leaves ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, especially in uh, Dearborn area. Yep. And um, they only put white rice in it. And some yeah, other flavors. It, it cooks easier. Yeah, it cooks easier if it's the white rice. Don't take that out. Don't take that out. There's a comfort, there's a comfort food effect. There's a definite comfort with this that it's like, it feels so right. There's definitely comfort with this dish <laughs> that you're making. Yeah, it's like a family type uh, food. You can have, you know, other members help with it. You know, uh, at my church, the ladies help make them for the whole community and they would, work on all together. That's so, that's, work that's really, I love that socialization. Yeah, I love the socialization and the community and cooking with someone. Um, I just, I, it Rachel feels so good. Can I cook, cook with I someone? The grape leaves. What? What did she want to know? To get the grape leaves. And probably the best place would be like at an international market, Rachel. Or Cantoros. Cantoros has it too, has grape leaves. You can get a jar of them there. So there's a different. And they're already ready to cook. Yeah. For you. But how difficult is it to grow them? Oh, actually, they're good. Good question. Uh, actually, they come out every year. Just uh, I have them like on a trellis, and uh, every year they pretty much come out like in June. So they're very by themselves. Very they're... Easy. So they're perennials. Yeah, they're exactly. perennials. They come up by themselves every year, huh? And actually, in June, it's the best time uh, to pick them, like um, middle of June. Okay. Oh, she's asking. I cut out a little bit. Um, I would recommend you could try going to Cantoros, Rachel, or any kind of international markets. But Cantoros should have them. They they have all kinds of imported foods. And if you have trouble, just you can uh, direct message me if you have trouble finding them. And I'll get you all set up. My sister's helping too. <laughs> She's, she makes them really fast. She's quick. I didn't even know you had a sister. <laughs> oh, yeah, my sister Maria. She's uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. Maria. <laughs> she's your she, she's your sous chef, huh? She's my sous chef. That's nice. 
Another great thing to have is one of these little juicers. I would tell you, Watch you, this. you sweet it's citrus, kind of right? Yeah. Limes. Right. Yes. And you just put your lemon right here, cut it in half. Okay. Use that right mm -hmm. on top. I love kitchen gadgets. Okay. I do too. Oh my gosh. I have an entire appliance counter. It's just horrible. I have so many appliances. I have, oh, Lord help me. <laughs> my kitchen is pretty much fully stocked <laughs> all over the place. Honestly, it is. And I'm on a, I'm always on a diet. You're like, I need this that. What? You're probably like, oh, I need this. Every time you see something, you're like, well, I need I this, I need that. I love the food. I love I love the prep. I've been using my food processor lately. Um, let me see. I did potato. I did my own hash browns the other day, and I just you know shredded that potato in like four seconds. And um, I've just been using a lot of my appliances lately, just for everything: juicing carrots, juicing celery in the morning because it's super healthy. It's mostly water, and it really cleans your cells so when you have the the raw vegetables like and you juice them and you drink it immediately like don't bite in the store like juice it immediately it has so many enzymes you're gonna see these like under a microscope they're alive they're living you're giving your body something you know something really fresh to work with not just dead dead food so i love juicing in the morning and it takes a big juicer to do that Juicing beets. And I know you love your enzyme. What? I know you love the enzyme class. I do. I do because they're going to put, so they're going to, they're going to attach, the, they're going to create this situation where the end of my cells with those telomeres are going to be a little longer and a little longer. If you're, you know, if you're eating something living like that, it really makes a difference in, in that important oil. So, Raw vegetables, if you can, do, if you don't like them, just juice them or put them in something, um, you know, where you can learn to like them. So here's here's an interesting fact. So do you know why kids don't like vegetables? Okay. Really, they don't like them that much. Is because their body needs that protein to grow. They have to have a great deal of protein. So they're going to primarily go for the meats and things. And there was this whole movement about hiding vegetables because parents thought that the kids needed the vegetables, but actually they don't need them then. They need them at full adult grown stage because this is what sustains your body. At this point, the protein's not sustaining my body. I do need some amount of protein. I can get that from beans and things, but I don't need the protein I needed as a child. Um, that's why when you're an adult, you learn to like vegetables because your body, this is the stage where your body really needs them. If that made any sense at all. <laughs> oh, wait, that, oh, very interesting. I never yes, knew it is. that. Yeah, so yeah, kids have to have the protein. Yeah, the kids have to have that protein to grow their bones, their cells, their muscles, everything, their hair. They have to have that sustained protein for growth because that's the forming stage. And then when they're adults, they don't need to grow anymore, right? they need to keep those cells and those telomeres the red blood cells everything they need to keep those vital with with vegetables like raw vegetables if you can or cook vegetables or something like that that's just the cycle of life i know a lot of people are on that um rock diet the which one what do you think of that one which one the which diet, diet. Oh, the raw food! Like I love raw, it. They eat nothing but raw food. Yeah, my favorite cookbook. Well, there's two. There's the um, Jennifer Cornbleed. I would recommend her. I was subscribed to her site forever. She's amazing. She has the best recipes. You don't even know. Like you can take um, iceberg lettuce and an avocado and a lemon and put it in your blender and have lettuce soup. And it's so flavorful. She's got these spices that go in it. And lettuce soup is one of my favorite soups. I mean, that sounds crazy, but it's a summer soup. It's a cold soup. 
you know, like gazpacho or something. She does, she's an amazing. And then there's this thug cookbook, which is another vegan cookbook. And it has swear words in it, and it's kind of like rough. It's kind of like thugs, but they they really know how to treat vegetables. It's hilarious. <laughs> they have more in depth oh. recipes when you you know when you're doing a lot more, having a lot more ingredients to prepare. So you really, when you're cooking, you really have to like the process of cooking. It's not just oh, absolutely. Yeah, open a can of soup, put it on, and heat it. It's yeah, put your heart into cooking. it. You have to work with it. The more you do of one thing, the better you get at it. No matter what it is, the more you do of this one thing over and over, the more you do it, the better you are, the, the better you become with it, right? Yeah, you get more comfortable, um, confident that you know, you know, you learn, you learn from mistakes too. So what are you going to do with all these stuffed grape leaves? We, we like when you made uh, a couple, I remember you made uh, some really nice dishes before when we did some cooking. I think there was like a cold soup you made with, I think it was with carrot or butternut squash. Yeah. It was like, a, it was a while ago. That was a long time ago. It was a while ago. Yeah, time sure does fly. So what do you guys, so the guys that are following you, what do they want to, what do they want to learn about? What do they want to know about? What recipes would they like? That's what I want to know. What do you want to cook? Aaron loves to cook and Rachel wants to get more comfortable cooking. She wants to get more confident in the kitchen. And I know they're looking for recipes that are not too difficult, but they're healthy and they want to, you know, kind of maybe some beginner recipes and nutrition uh, added in there too. Erin's been to some of my Greek cooking classes, quite a few. And she are actually made the spinach the pie roll. I love that. Are you still teaching at the college, Dr. George? Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, oh, I just yeah. taught a Zoom class uh, uh, a couple weeks ago. Just some, we finally are getting things. Uh, and then we're going to do uh, in-person learning. Now in the spring and summer, we're going to try in-person learning in the kitchen. Okay, they're getting back. They're getting back. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, I don't know absolutely. how the kitchen is going to change with all of that. I don't know what the rules are going to be, but wow, I'm happy. It's an adjustment. So you're wrapping, you're wrapping the filling in the grape leaf, and then talk talk to us a little bit about seam side down, the actual wrapping process. You're doing a lot of wrapping, but I don't see the process. Oh, where it's going. <laughs> Well, basically, here's the, what I'm doing is, after I wrap them, I've been putting them in this uh, pan here, and then I'm going to fill this with water, cover it with a plate, and then uh, I fill it with water, lemon juice, and olive oil. And I'll show you what I've done here. I did this earlier. See, I covered them with the plate so they don't unravel. And see, when you take the plate off, presto, they're ready. Okay, so yeah, you put some weight on them, okay. And the, Yeah, because they would unravel with the good. water. Yeah, it would be like a total uh, a dumpster fire, hot mess. <laughs> yes, yeah, it would be a big, uh, <laughs> you'd have soup, basically. I like soup. <laughs> but you want it to look pretty. Oh yeah, yeah. Presentation, presentation. So see, same thing here. Trading with everything, food. right? Right. So where does the feta cheese come in, or does it? Oh, and then the feta cheese. What I like to do with that is drizzle some olive oil on there. Just like that, and then take some of the seasoning.
and so garnish with little seasoning, see. But it looks like there's seasoning inside that feta cheese. Oh, I, earlier a little bit of it came off and fell on there. But that, yeah, and then you put some olives around for garnish. See, Greek Kalamata olives. Beautiful. Not from the, I know a lot of people uh, don't like olives, but I think it's because they eat the canned ones. That could you be. Gotta, uh, I just learned how many calories are in an olives because I was doing this counting calorie thing and I love olives. I was just popping, I used to just pop them in my mouth thinking, oh, it's not too bad. It's like the same calories as a pickle. But when I weigh myself the next day, I do notice an uptick in an ounce or two. And oh. I, I love olives and pickles, but I'm now going to be a little more careful with my olives and pickles. Olive intake. They're not free. Yeah, they're totally not free if you're if you're counting anything. But it's the good fat. Okay, it is. It is. So how long do they cook in the water with the plate? And uh, how long is that process? Uh, about a half hour. Okay. And, uh, the the water is absorbed. And then once it's absorbed, then you take them out and you're going to put them on a plate and then you're going to juice them with a little bit more uh, lemon juice. Oh, do. I was going to say juice them. What are you talking about? It's like something. These are so hot. And there's also a dip too. There's also a dip. The tzatziki. So as you can see here, the yeah, yeah. And then there's a the tzatziki dip, which is like another you want something to, uh, that to juice create. them with the lemon. It's classic, yeah. Classic cream. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Can't get enough of that. Yeah, that's got the yogurt, garlic. So between the lemon and the lime, here's a here's a trick question. Between a lemon and a lime, which one has more vitamin C? Oh, more vitamin C between lemon and a lime? Oh, it could be, mm, would, would the lime have more? It's no, the it's lemon. lemon. Is it, yeah, and I, I, and I think it's because you get more juice. Like the limes just aren't as juicy as a lemon. They're just smaller and there's lemon. just less pulp. Maybe that's why, I don't know, but that's what they tell me. I've, I've never... I don't know how to test for vitamin C, but that's what they say. So you're getting a lot of vitamin C and during this pandemic, that's exactly what you need. Yeah. Fresh vitamin C, you know, take a walk in the sunshine. Lemons definitely are full of vitamin C. Did you know that if you want to get more juice out of your lemons, you just have to put them on the cutting board and roll them. And Smash you get the juice them. out of the lemon. Smash them when they're peeled. Yeah, just yeah, they roll it on the cutboard. That's cool. That's cool. So there are two things I don't really understand. Why you can't have that much lemon peel in something because it's not good and why you can zest it. And the other thing I've never understood that I've never had time to look up is the bay leaf. Like you can put a bay leaf in soup, but if you ingest it, it's like not good for you. It's poison. Like what? What is up with the bay leaf thing? Like it's flavor. You can extract the flavor out, but you can't have the leaf itself. I don't understand that. I've never understood that. I've never looked it up. Funny. Do you know? I don't know. You can't eat it. You like? Oh, I think we're. I don't, oh, I don't I think, think it's froze up. poison. Poison. Yeah, you froze for a minute, and I was just nannering on. Somebody messaged me. It froze me up. <laughs> you were talking about the bay leaf. 
So I don't understand that. So I can put it in my suits and it can flavor my suits a certain way. I suppose it does. I'm not really sure with or without it, how, what the differentiation is. But if you serve it and somebody bites it, it's a toxic thing. But how are we extracting the flavor out of the bay leaf, but you can't bite into it? I just never got, I have never gotten that my whole life. Maybe one of your viewers knows, I don't know. I don't understand. I bet somebody out there knows that one. What? I bet Maybe Aaron out knows. There knows. <laughs> yeah, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> what is you. up with that? And and this and then the bay leaf is such a nondescript flavor to me. It doesn't feel like, you know, like oregano I know and basil I know and salt and pepper, but the bay leaf doesn't have that distinct you know like this is really i can tell there has been a bay leaf in this i i have i just put it in there as a token sort of suggestion but i don't know if it makes a difference or not honestly i always wondered about that i know uh a lot of the chefs yeah they put the bay leaf in soups and stews many times and it's supposed to bring out the flavors uh, but you're supposed to take, take it out at the end. Before you serve, you can't serve it with a bay leaf in it. And it's like, hmm. oh, yeah. no. you don't, Sometimes what you they don't. do, they make a little sachet bag and they put it in a little bag. Yeah, so you don't accidentally spikes. bite into it. Yeah, yeah, so you don't accidentally bite into it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we had that in our first class, staying healthy with nutrition with Elds and Haws. I don't know. Maybe we had that and I missed it because there was so much material. Oh, right. Um, Rachel wanted to know how she can have more energy. Do you, we think if she had went on the Mediterranean diet, do you think it would help her have more energy? Yes. Yeah, so there's a couple tricks to energy and one of them is definitely water. And even if you take the lemon water or something like that, um, you'll have more energy than if you drink, than if you just drink less filtered, you know, less water. So having water helps a great deal. I use a lot of unsweetened iced tea because it has 50% of the caffeine in coffee. Um, and I eat, this sounds really weird, but during the day, I don't eat something like a banana that has potassium in it because potassium is a relaxing thing. And so if I can't sleep at night, I'll have a banana in the night and not in the morning for breakfast because that's gonna make me feel yawny and tired. Also, there are certain carbs that trigger this relaxation sensation like the pastas and the comfort foods and breads. Those are going to make you feel um, sluggish i mean i will crash if i have spaghetti i will feel tired within an hour and i'm italian and i love spaghetti so yeah things like that really do crash you so eating something a little bit fresher whether it's blueberries if you need a sugar if you need your blood sugar it would be strawberries um, if you need a lift in something like that that helps give you energy but i'd say water is the first thing and you're like you've been saying in a lot of their our talks, water should be uh, the first thing we drink when we get up in the morning. Absolutely, drink so, an entire eat, glass of water. water. Yeah. Before every meal, you'll, you'll eat less because that will fill your stomach. So it's already got this water in it and it will fill your stomach. So it's a really good trick to um, satiation, to have you feel that satiated feeling. Um, but the lemon water is, is excellent for energy. and. Celery has, um, also celery juice has this uplifting effect. Are, all, are, are these only adults listening or are there children listening? Because I was going to say something else about the celery. <laughs> oh, right now it's, right now it's adults. So celery is also an aphrodisiac. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So <laughs> you want to get some more energy, there you go. <laughs> there, the celery. It's who knew, right? Yeah, eat more celery. <laughs> so people uh, can... I, celery soup. I like that. Yeah, totally celery soup. So yeah, I'll be. I have everybody juicing celery soon, right? 
<laughs> How would you make your celery juice? So when I when I make my celery juice, so I really love that. Um, I really love tomatoes too. So, but when I'm just juicing celery, I just juice it all by itself. I just juice it and drink it. Like, so when you juice any vegetables, you have to drink it within seconds. It's almost like chewing it because the longer you wait, the longer it's absorbed. You know, with oxygen, the oxygen sort of degrades it. So you just bottoms up. You know, just as quick as you can. But I also put in my celery that kind of like a V8 cocktail where it has the tomatoes and the green pepper and the parsley and the carrots. And I, I do a little spices. I actually put a little horseradish in mine to kick it up a notch. Um, so I do my juices like that so that they're absolutely delicious. Oh, I never knew that. <laughs> You'll have to post that. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And I just have whatever's in the fridge, I just throw it in there, you know, whatever I have in there, which is a lot of tomatoes and uh, the green peppers, red peppers, whatever I have, it just goes in my, I just throw all this in my juicer. You can put an onion in there if you like it, but I used to do a lot of garlic in there, but then I've learned that garlic and onions create for me a response for a sweet tooth. And so I had green onions for lunch. I sauteed mushrooms, green onions, and zucchini. That was my lunch. And then afterwards, I wanted something sweet. It, it's that onion I have. I don't know why. And I'm not a sweet person. I don't like sugar. It just, that makes me, I have to put something sweet in my mouth, like a breath mint or something. Does that happen to you when you eat certain foods? Yes. I like, well, like a lot of seafood, too. Oh, yeah. That happens to me. Rachel wanted to know, how does Suzanne know all this? <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of took a couple classes together for a couple years, right? <laughs> yes, online. We both know each other from uh, Clayton College of Natural Health. That's where we went. Yeah, we took uh, nutrition courses, oh, got our degree actually, online. Yes, we have degrees in it. And so this is one of the first, but we had like a ton of, I want to shut my phone down, sorry. So I saw you, my favorite, this is, what is it, 900 pages? Wait, this one, I have it with me. It's 900 pages. This was our very first book that we had to read and study. And there were like a ton of questions and it was so confusing. And talk about back in the day when you flip back and forth in a book and you're absolutely crazy. And I, I was practically crying and saying, I'll never get through this. I'll never get this done. I can't handle this. You know, just like all that kind of stuff. Like, I'll never be good at this. My phone fell. So that was our first of many books. We have a lot of books that we read. And oh, things that we watched. I remember that. Um, go ahead. I remember that book. <laughs> Oh, help me. And I still refer to it. I still do. Actually, I have books from all of my colleges. Like, I just feel like once in a while, I just thump through. I should get rid of them, but I don't. No. Absolutely. Yeah, I have all my Clayton College books together and the uh, course material. Me too. We should do something with that. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know what. Definitely. But it's a I good think, reminder. Go ahead. It's a good reminder of what we went through. <laughs> so I'm finding a lot of inaccuracies about food online. So when people when you Google something, you're not gonna get that academic information unless you can go to Scholar Google. If you go to Scholar Google, you'll get academic information. It'll be researched, it'll be peer reviewed. You won't have any advertisements at all, and you can get really good information about nutrition and, and things like what happens to your body when this or this happens. So I live in Southern California, and in my community is a city called Loma Linda, California. And Loma Linda is a blue zone. And Loma Linda, a blue zone means it's one of the places in the entire world where people have the longest longevity. And if you study 
what they eat. It, it really makes sense. And the doctors at Loma Linda tell us that the veins of people who eat primarily vegetables are a lot more subtle, subtle, like softer than the people who eat primarily meat. And so the people who are eating meat, they have their veins. You know, if you see those lumpy veins on people, like in their legs and stuff, what do you call that lumpy vein thing? Anyway, as meat travels through your veins, I think as, as the, not the meat doesn't travel through your veins, as the residual um, ingredients from the meat travels through your system and the vegetables travel through your system, it makes a huge difference. And so the people that were eating predominantly vegetables had much more softer veins, their blood was flowing, they had less cholesterol issues, their white cells and red blood cells were better, you know, they had better numbers all the way around. And so when you think about putting something, you know, these residual ingredients inside something as small as a vein, you want that to flow just really beautifully, like a, a like a well oiled, you know, sink or something, a drain. You want you want your system with all those things flowing. It just makes sense. Am I talking too much? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I like I like listening to you talk while I'm working. Mm. But I, I, like I know you what you mean about while that I'm working. Because, just, um, I like you cooking while I'm chatting away, but I just can't taste anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you're right about that because um, they say that people that eat dark chocolate, they did a whole study with them, the people that ate the dark chocolate and they measured how quickly the blood would travel through their veins and versus people that were not eating dark chocolate. And they did, there's actually some kind of a tool that they can measure how fast the blood rushes through your uh, arteries, how well it travels and circulates. And people that ate dark chocolate, they said their uh, veins uh, work much better. So I know exactly what you mean. So in Livonia, Michigan, you guys are in Michigan, this is where I first was introduced to the dark field test. It's dark field, I think it's one word, and I'll, I'll, I still have my results from this clinic in Livonia. They are absolutely top notch. One of the things they do is they pick your finger, and I, it's so funny because I was, I ate something like, at, this is back in the day, I was younger, like a milkshake or something, and I, I went to the clinic, and I'm like, yeah, pick my finger, and she's like, Oh my God, and, and you can see your results of your blood. You can see everything on this big screen of what your, what, what's going on in your blood at that second. And she said, it's like a snowstorm. There's so much fat. I can't even see any of yourself. Like there's like a snowstorm. So I had oh. to go back when I, ate, when I ate cleaner. Yeah, it, it, it was that instantaneous because I was driving over there sucking on a milkshake for some reason and there was so much fat and ice cream and milk in that that i clogged my entire system and she could see it she said what on earth did you have it's like a snowstorm i can't see it. and i could see all these little white dots so then i went back later and i ate a lot cleaner and then i could see my blood flowing i could see my red cells my white cells my plate it's it's just an amazing test so if you have a chance to do a dark field test it gives you this sense that everything that you do intake, really, there is a cause and effect. Even if you don't feel it, even if you don't know it, it does exist. Then also at this clinic, well, they, well, they say they that, that um, have you seen some of those um, uh, where they talk about uh, when you drink a soda, as soon as you drink a pop or soda, what it does to your body? No, I haven't. Was asking about how on the pop, but there's actually, um, there's a person on Twitter that posted it a couple times that when you drink uh, soda or pop, uh, there's a whole reaction that happens, a chemical reaction happens in your body from drinking it. Really? And uh, it's a shock to your whole system, just from drinking one pop. I've never actually. seen that, I'd love to see that. I've never, because I don't drink soda, so I've never paid attention, but I would like to see the study. That's scary because yeah I because I the restaurants yeah please send it to me like for example they're selling this sugar which is killing your cells um and 
McDonald's, for example, they introduced the widest straw. It's, it's wider than any other straw so that your fluid intake, like you've got this giant cola or whatever you're drinking, that straw is so wide that it's just, you're just bombarding your system with it. And it's one of their marketing techniques um, to sell because sugar is highly addictive, you know? So their food. Oh yeah. Just, uh, anyway. Yeah, but they do have wide straws. But so the other test that they give you that Livonia clinic, they come to the back of your neck and then they just cut, they cut your hair just so no one can see it. They cut some a few pieces of your hair and they send it to a lab and it tells you how much chemicals you have in your body, such as mercury or lead or aluminum or anything like that. So I had my whole test. I had like cadmium inside of me. Like, what is cadmium? How do I have? What is that? And so then you can start doing, you can start taking a chelate, um, C-H-E-L-A-T-E, -E, and it will take out those minerals. And I had one of, I had an old, old filling. I was getting some of the, some of those metals, toxic metals from that filling. And I don't know where the rest came from because like, where does cadmium come from in aluminum? How do I have that in my body? Like, I, I don't know. Mercury, I've heard, I had, like, mercury from f big fish, I heard. Could be. And they say if you eat the bigger fish, you can get mercury. So eat the younger or smaller fish if you, if you seem to have okay. a problem with that. But cadmium, I haven't heard. Aluminum, maybe the, if you're cooking with aluminum pans. Or that's foil. That's all I can think of. Right. It transfers, it definitely we'll transfers to, to the food. And then, all right, let's do it. You give a lot, you give people a lot to think about. So I will get you the name of that clinic in Livonia. They're fabulous. I hope they're still there. I was with them, what, 20 years ago or something. Oh, so they were yeah. my primary doctors. I'll, I'll back to you. I'll get the information because I'm in Livonia, so I can, I'd love to go over there. It, yeah, because I was in Farmington. I was by, um, you know, Grandin, 10 mile, 8 mile, around there. Not Farmington Hills, but the little city of Farmington, downtown there. Yeah. Nice place. Interesting. Yeah, I would so love that. And I know it can, I heard that about the hair. They can test your hair and find uh, what you're deficient in. Mm-hmm. Yep, I learned so much from that clinic and and how your blood reacts to everything that you put in your mouth. Um, so I think in America, I think that what we do is we satisfy our palate and our cravings, but we don't think about the purpose of food or nutrition. That's I'm guessing, because I'm guilty of that. When I'm stressed out, man, I'll just eat salty things, <laughs> salty, crunchy things. Are you frozen again? Uh, for a second. How about, did you ever see the test where they put people's feet in a, it's in a tub and uh, I think they put some kind of solution in there and when they take their feet out of the solution, um, yes. all the toxins come out. That's another it's all one black. that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's another good one. So, and taking even charcoal, even if you have a drink, so, I know the people, even like if you're drinking alcohol at night or something like that, and you're having a good time having a party, take take a charcoal pill after that. Like they have the pills, the capsules, and just take a few charcoal, and that will absorb all of the, um, everything that's in there that's bad. It will bind to it, and it will go out of your body. So, you know, putting bad stuff in, you're not going to ever avoid that. But cleaning it with charcoal or a chelate, will definitely improve it. Don't just leave, you know, that bad stuff in there. Just clean and, you know, cleanse, drink and cleanse. <laughs> I, see, I see a lot about the charcoal now. There's charcoal uh, soap. Toothpaste, pills, and they're relatively inexpensive. You can get charcoal kill. If you had a hangover, which I haven't, in, in, this whole COVID thing is, I don't even have a good time. Um, if you had a hangover, <laughs> <laughs> Take charcoal pills, it will cure it. 
or you could get a Bloody Mary. I'm just, just whatever, whatever well, you do. Whatever's available. Right. <laughs> right. So how are those grape loops coming? Oh, I actually, uh, I finished this play here. So I did all these. I just have to put them in the pan and cook them. And then I have another one that's cooking in the, in a steamer. Let me see if I can get it out. I need another mitt. One second. Let me text you real quick. These I cooked in a steamer. Oh, she's gone. This is an Epicure steamer. So if you guys get the Epicure steamer, the site too, this is uh, how they, they come out in here too. You can do them in a variety of different ways. Looks like she must have, Dr. Suzanne must have got bumped off. Let's see if she can come back, if she's able to come back, hopefully. I hope she can. We'll really enjoy having her. Well, we're doing our, our Greek night. I made some stuffed grape leaves. Oh, maybe she's back. Hopefully she's back. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know she had a phone call. I didn't hear her. I stepped away. George, are you there? Okay. Hello? Thanks for letting me know, Cassie. <laughs> well, for those of you that just joined us, we've been doing a really nice show. I made the uh, stuffed grape leaves. This is part two. I'd use the Epicure steamer. Thank you, Donna. And like I said earlier, once you take them out, this is the time to um, that you want to juice some. I like to garnish it with the lemon. Oh yeah. Well, they're a nice combination. If you add them together with the feta cheese, it's a really nice combination. You got your feta cheese and olives and then your uh, stuffed grape leaves. And usually they're better if they cool though. Yeah, all part of the matter. So let me know uh, what kind of Greek dishes you guys to see. I might do another one tomorrow too. Another uh, demonstration tomorrow. They're mostly. Uh, um, you can eat them hot too, but I like eating them cold. And then I put that uh, tzatziki dip on top, the yogurt, cucumber yogurt dip on top. And it just makes it perfect. Okay, talk to you later, Suzanne. Thanks so much. Uh, we always love having you here. And let me know. We'll try to do another show really soon. You're very welcome anytime.
And uh, I'll message you about the information for the that place that uh, you were talking about, and also for and I'll be back on tomorrow also in the afternoon uh, to do part two of our uh, Greek cooking and nutrition. And make I would like to get the about uh, the celery juice recipe for more energy. Now everyone's jumping out again. I'll have to uh, rewatch it. You'll have to replay it, everybody. Hi, Tracy. Oh, you're new. Well, basically, uh, what we did here is we made some stuffed grape leaves. I'll kind of show you around the table for everyone that's just joining us. We made some stuffed grape leaves. I made a little uh, appetizer plate with feta cheese and olives. While Dr. Suzanne was talking, I wrapped them. And then I'm going to put them inside a pot covered with water, lemon juice, and olive oil. And then when they come out, they're just like this. Really healthy and tasty. And I also made, uh, I steamed some also in this uh, Epicure steamer. I put some in there as well, covered them. Uh, with uh, the same thing, lemon juice and water and olive oil. I let it uh, boil and uh, voila, there you have it. The Mediterranean diet. I'll be posting the recipe too. Hi Lisa, great to have you along. I also use uh, the spices, Erin's gonna get them too. I use the lemon dilly spice. You definitely want to check that out from Epicure. I'll be posting the website for it. But the comes there's a whole Greek kit that you can get. This one is the uh, souvlaki, which you can make uh, Greek. There's also the Greek seasoning. This is to make your dressing. And I also add it to feta cheese. And then tomorrow in part two, we'll we have some ouzo in there. We'll cook with some ouzo. Aaron wants to see a Greek lemon chicken recipe. So we'll do that one for Aaron tomorrow. So I want to thank everybody for joining me here on Greek night. You can replay it and watch it from the beginning to see exactly how I made everything. And check out a lot of the cool nutrition information that Dr. Suzanne gave us too. Thanks for watching everybody. See you tomorrow for part two.